Have you ever wondered how much it costs to fill your battery? And what the difference is at different public charges? Well, a recent chat with long time EV driver D in Shrewsbury posed some interesting questions. It got me thinking. I know if we pull in a, say, 37% state of charge and charge to 85%, how much does our session cost? Because it tells us. But the figure doesn't really help in any way. So I thought what we needed was a really simple guide. This EV costs X pound for a full charge. I'm Dave, I've got some startling answers that will shock many of you to the core. Okay, at first glance, I realised that this could prove complicated. VW has 83 different models and variants, and more are arriving by the day. And then I remembered the amount of electricity it takes to fill a battery is down to just one thing, the size of the battery. Nothing to do with make, model, performance or efficiency, charging speeds or state of charge. A 40 kilowatt battery in a budget car will take exactly the same amount of electricity to fill as a 40 kilowatt hour battery in a long range or performance version of a totally different brand. Likewise, a monster EV with a 100 kilowatt hour battery will always simply take twice the electricity as a 50 kilowatt hour battery. This is just capacity. So how far an EV can go on that full charge is a whole new video, and that's for a later date. Today we look at price, so I produce data for different sized batteries. Few EVs have a battery smaller than 30 kilowatt hours, so that's the baseline. And few have sizes above 100 kilowatt hours, so that's the top line. I've included all capacities in between, rounded up to the nearest 10 kilowatt hours. Now, quite simply, check your battery size, use the data for the closest. For any real eggheads, it's not that difficult to calculate sizes in between if you really want to. Let's have an example. If you've got an EV with a 38.7 kilowatt hour battery size, just use the 40 kilowatt hour data. It's near enough. Likewise, if your battery size is 52.6 kilowatt hours, use the 50 kilowatt hour. By the way, these are always available or usable capacities, the bit we can and do use. We now need to establish how much we put in. None of us in the real world ever arrive totally empty battery, so here we're going to depart from that real world. For this chart, we do indeed arrive, theoretically, at a 0% state of charge. Departure is easy, that will always be 100% state of charge. Now, before everyone shouts, I never fill to 100%, it doesn't matter. I'm not telling you to fill your batteries to 100%, I'm just comparing the price for charging batteries of very Varying sizes from 0% to 100% at various public charger prices, even if you never use a public charger or ever charge to 100%. But a big, big variation comes in the price you have to pay for filling each of those batteries, and here it matters not a jot if you use a home, fast, rapid, ultra rapid charger, nor whether we have really fast or really slow maximum charging speed. We purely want the amount of electricity we can put in so we can multiply it by the price we pay. Prices range from as little as 6p, home charging, uh, to over a pound. So that would be a huge table. So I've selected five price bands that represent the bulk of our EV charging. The first band is obviously home charging. Prices here for off-peak are amazingly consistent between the utility companies, about 7p a kilowatt hour. Uh, if you're not in the, on this rate, or maybe not on an EV off-peak rate at all, uh, maybe this will persuade you to switch. Next band is the ultra cheap. Now this really does not matter whether you use a three kilowatt street lamppost charger or the Glasgow first bus stepper at 39p or a Tesla V4 250 kilowatt ultra rapid charger open to all from about 37p. Nor whether this price is a special offer or a membership price or an introductory offer you got with your new EV. If this is what you actually pay, this is what it will actually cost you to fill it. So next we have the cheap hovering around about 60p. There are several 65p like Zest, some like Westmoreland, uh, 65, 69, others like Arnold Clark, 55p. And here also you'll get some of your off-peak offers from the likes of Instavolt, which off-peak is exactly 60 pence. I do know uh, many people use these and only ever charge here. 
The next band I'll call Average at 75 pence. That'll include people like Apple Green, Sainsbury's, a multitude of others. And finally, we have the heavyweights at 89p. This includes the Old Guard, Gridserve, 87, 89p, Osprey, 82, Instavolt, Dayrate, 89, BP Pulse, Shell Recharge. To use it, you just simply track along the battery size until you reach the nearest to your size, then track down the price bands until you find the nearest to what you actually normally pay or what you've, no or what you've just paid. I guarantee you're in for one mighty shock. Well, let's look at the results. Let's start with the simplest. Your EV's got a 30 kilowatt hour battery. You charge at home. This will include the likes, uh, EVs are like, uh, like a Fiat 500, Dasha Spring, Citroen EC3, BYD Dolphin Surf. There are others. 30 kilowatt hour battery will accept 30 kilowatt hours and each kilowatt hour costs 7p. So a BYD Dolphin Surf charge at home will cost you £2.10p. Yes, folks, two quid. Now drive along to a supercharger open to all, off-peak, and that rises to 12p. Yes, public charging is not cheap, but wait, it gets very seriously worse very quickly. Drive to a Zest or Instavolt overnight, and that rises to £18. Drive to your local Sainsbury's, that'll be about £21.60. And finally, pop along to your trusty, reliable Osprey or Grid Serve. You're going to pay £26.70. Yeah, two quid or £26.70. That is a spread that's going to shock many people. Moving on up to the 40 kilowatt hour batteries, this is going to include models like Ford Puma, Renault 5, Hyundai Insta, Vauxhall Frontera, Leap Motor T03 and the Nissan Micra, the new one. That same exercise gives you home charging £2.80, it's gone up, um, nearly three quid, uh, then £16 through £24 and £30 to the peak of £35.60. That's really interesting. An ultra cheap cheap charge will cost less than half what the most numerous CPOs like BP Pulse will charge you. Twice the price and of course you must realise that electricity is exactly the same and of course come from exactly the same national grid, no matter who you choose. But as the batteries get bigger, so the gap widens. 50 kilowatt hours, very common size like VW, ID3, MG4, Hyundai Kona, Skoda Elrock and the Volvo EX30. Home charge just £3.50. Ultra cheap is £20, cheap is 30 average is 375 and the expensive is a mind-blowing £44.50. It's nearly 50 quid. Now, I do need to point out that a specific model like a VW ID3 can have a battery capacity of 50 kilowatt hours at the budget end, but as much as 80 kilowatt hour at the long range performance end. And that's, that's a huge difference. It's also a huge extra weight to carry around. Uh, sorry, but I probably just made your choice of new EV a bit more complicated. Now, it's true that some models can have larger batteries and better efficiency, uh, our equivalent to miles per gallon, but not all. Sometimes that bigger battery hammers your efficiency. Just, just be aware of it. Well, moving onwards and upwards, 60 kilowatt hour covers models, variants like BYD Dolphin, Tesla Model 3, Model Y, uh, Cupra Born, Peugeot E308, Omoda E5, Smart 5, uh, MG IM5 and 6, Volvo X40, VW ID4. Here, home charge will cost you £4.20, ultra cheap 24, cheap 36. Average 45 and top of the shop £53.40. So let's just put that into some perspective. If you charge once a week and totally fill the battery each time, switching from Shell Recharge or Grid Serve to Sainsbury's will save you nearly a tenner a week, each and every week, while switching to a B.EV on a membership at 39p or a supercharger open to all without a membership will save you an amazingly whopping £30 a week, £1,500 a year. That's not my job to tell you what to do. It's a free world. You can pay what you want. I just provide the data. And no, I'm not acting as an agent for Sainsbury's or Tesla. They don't need my help. But just asking if you really have that much money to spare. From here, it gets worse. We get up to 70 kilowatt hour. Home charging now £4.90. Ultra cheap 28. Cheap 42. Average £52.50. And top of the shop £62.30. 
I don't believe any further comments are needed. I don't need to read any more out. You know how to read the data. You can see it all for yourself. But a few comments. When I drove a diesel car as a rep, by the way, I used my own car, bought my own diesel and charged it against expensive and tax. I would always be on the lookout for cheap diesel, but in my day, I think it still applies. Cheap meant a couple of pence, one or two pence a litre off. If a garage ever offered 5p off, there were huge queues with motorists coming from miles around. And a tank full might give you total savings of £2.50. Here we're looking at EV drivers queuing up a grid serve to pay more than twice the price, nearly 30 quid more. And it seems nobody bats an eyelid. Has society really changed that much? If you have a 100 kilowatt hour battery, and that surprisingly includes relatively popular cars like the Peugeot E3008, uh, long range Smart 5 Pulse, and the VW ID7 Pro S, that gap widens. A full battery at a, a, an ultra cheap will cost 40 quid, while grid serve or Instavolt, the day rate, you'll, it'll cost you 89 quid. Now, the purpose of this video is not to force you to change your charging habits. It's entirely your choice. But the majority of us with petrol or diesel cars would regularly in the past have driven a few extra miles just to save a few quid. Why don't we do that with EVs? From my chats with EV drivers who are charging while I'm out filming, it's certainly because in many cases they have no idea that such cheap charging is widely available or how expensive it is at the deer end. They got their EV, they found their nearest most convenient CPO just around the corner, started using it, never actually looked anywhere else, or they're on the motorway and their state of charge says 20%. They go, oh my goodness, got to find somewhere. They pull into the first services, just choose the nearest charger. This video is to do some of the hard work of showing in really simple terms what's out there. It's up to you to look for the cheaper ones if, and, uh, if you want to, and then begin to use them. There are now multiple CPOs which charge around 40 or 60p, but they might need you to drive a few miles. Remember, we always used to. Or look on your chosen location. You might find two very close by at different prices. Home charging is simple. It's generally to, uh, by far the cheapest you'll ever find. This has been recognised by the industry and government, and there's a huge effort going on looking into how to get more people at home who cannot currently charge to be able to. I'm going to be launching a video shortly on this subject, and I can tell you that more councils now accept cable gullies, even those previously who refused them. And there are government grants towards getting one, you can get paid, getting all fitted, as well as a, a grant for the charger if you have to use a cable gully. But of course, cable gullies do not help flat or apartment dwellers. So I'm working on a scheme that would allow them to get the cheapest over, overnight rates. I uh, don't need to tell you to subscribe and like. Oh, sorry, just did. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.